The objective of this lesson is to simply go over what the College Board is expecting you to do when you submit your CREATE performance task. They're basically looking for three things, a video, written responses, and the code itself. So let's start there with the video. It needs to be a MP4 or one of these other file types. And the video demonstrates the running of at least one significant feature of your program. And just like the Explore task, the video itself cannot be more than 30 megabytes in size. The video presented is a sample submission. And good news for many of you who did not want to or do not like speaking in the videos that you're creating in class this year. But this video may or may not contain any audio. So if you don't want to speak, you don't have to. But you do have to run the program and record it running. And for this APCSP class, we're using JavaScript, so we're using App Lab to do that. The second thing the College Board wants is written responses. It says here, submit one PDF file in which you respond directly to each prompt, and then clearly label your responses 2A through 2D. And your responses to all prompts combined must not exceed 750 words. So 2A says provide a written response or audio narration in your video that identifies the programming language, identifies the purpose of your program, and explains what the video illustrates. So that's a nice option for you. You could just write out the narration, the code narration of what the video is showing. And this should be about 150 words. So let's look at a sample response. A student wrote, my program is a choose your own adventure game. I wrote this game in Python. So the code we're about to see today is in Python and it's going to be a little different than what you're used to, but the big ideas are still the same. So the student says that they wrote this in Python using the code sculptor development environment. Your guys' developer environment is going to be App Lab found on code.org. The student writes, the purpose of my program is to have the user play a small choose-your-own-adventure game in which they can pick several options for their path, which can either end in death, a happy life, or a return to the beginning to start all over again. The video illustrates the mechanics of the game, like the HP, probably hit point system, buttons, and text to play, display. It also outlines a storyline of the game and the many paths that a player may take while playing it. In addition, the video demonstrates smaller features like the randomly selected enemy in the fight path. So if you're in my class, I'm going to hand you this exact text, and your job is to circle um, the words that I have highlighted in red. Why? Because these are really important. And a lot of times, these are words I literally want you to use on your performance task. So I really want you to say the purpose and then say the video. So you're definitely referencing parts of the prompt right here in your answer. So let's go down here to the second prompt. Describe the incremental and iterative development process of your program, focusing on two distinct points in that process. Describe the difficulties and or opportunities you encountered and how they were resolved or incorporated. In your description, clearly indicate whether the whether the development described was collaborative or independent, at least one of these points must refer to independent program development. And then they max you out here of 200 words. So let's read a student example response here. I encountered several difficulties while writing the code for this program. One of the first difficulties was setting up the code so that I could change the number of buttons and the text of them every time the user made a decision. The simple GUI module I used to create my game in Python only allows you to add buttons, not delete them. So to make sure the correct number of buttons is displayed at each step, I had to design the program so that it created a new frame for each separate step, instead of just being able to add or delete programs in the same window. I also had issues making sure that the HP bar updated properly, even though the program was set up to check the HP value and change it, if necessary, every time the draw handler function ran. It didn't always work. As such, I had to create functions for increasing and decreasing the amount of HP instead of simply changing the variables within the other functions to ensure that the correct variables were being changed at the right time and that both the number of the on the screen and the size of the bar would change when the amount of HP changes. 
So here I've in red put buttons, check, function, variables, like whatever program you create. I imagine I'll have buttons, but whatever program you create, should you should be able to use these exact words in your explanation of the program. So in summary right here, we're just looking at difficulties and opportunities inside of your code. And this right here, to be, is something we've been practicing quite a bit that is narrating our code. And maybe in addition to what we've already done, when you begin this task, you should maybe keep a, a journal, write down thoughts that you're having as you're going through creating the program, and then use those notes, those thoughts, to guide you in your writing about the program. You're very likely not going to create a perfect program the first time around, and that's very natural and very okay, and it's okay to talk about it here. That is the part where it says incremental and iterative development process. You've gone through the process of changing your code in these two different types of ways, and I think it'll please the Cottage Board to see you being reflective of your difficulties and the opportunities that you had found inside of your code. So going down here to C says capture and paste the program code segment that implements an algorithm. And this is going to be marked with an oval in the section below. So that's the very end where you paste all of your code. And that code is not part of that 750 word limit. Or else it'd be really easy to go over. So it says to paste the program code segment that implements an algorithm that is fundamental for your program to achieve its intended purpose. Your code segment must include an algorithm that integrates other algorithms and integrates mathematical or logical concepts. So describe how each algorithm within your selected algorithm functions independently as well as in combination with others to form a new algorithm algorithm that hopes to achieve the intended purpose of the program. So here's where they pasted that code, that algorithm. And this is probably looking extra strange to us because it is written in Python and Python syntax is just different. But basically right here, this is defining a new function, a function called fight beast. And then here's some variables it has. And down here must be where the true, false, where the algorithmic part of the algorithm is. For you guys, you're looking for keywords like if and else. So here's the pasted code, and here's what the student writes about it. I chose this algorithm because it is important as it handles what happens when the player in the adventure game fights beasts. You see this word when, and it's also right here. We talked about the difference in English between when and if, and we talked about how in programming that's going to be that's going to look a little different. So this student writes, when you fight beasts, first you need to change the variables that update which place you are in the game by using true and false. Then you have the fight, and then you reset the frame's buttons. The algorithm Schrodinger, shown below, is integrated into the above algorithm. The algorithm Schrodinger is called to determine whether the player lives, that is, death pick is equals to false, with your health points decreased by 25% or dies and then your health points are set to zero and a corresponding message appears. Okay, this is not written very smoothly, but this is high school level writing. They're expecting that and they're okay if you you don't come into this class being a terrific writer. But what this paragraph is doing a good job at is identifying the parent algorithm and the child algorithm. So if we go up here, here's the parent, fight beast, and then here's all those commands that are going on. Now right here, this Schrodinger is the child algorithm, and down here they've pasted the code for that. So first paragraph here talks about the main algorithm, and then the second paragraph is talking about the child algorithm. Does that fit your prompt right here? Where it says capture and pay, okay, they pasted their code, and then down here it says describe how each algorithm basically functions. And it says as well as in combination with others. So the student must have chosen that second paragraph to do that. Because when they're talking about the child algorithm, they're doing the part here where it says in combination with others. Okay, so coming down here, we should be on 2D now. Oh, no, we're not because there's a third paragraph here. 
and I see that they're writing like both of these algorithms, so they're really um, bringing both algorithms together in this third paragraph. The student writes, the algorithm buttons shown below is another integrated algorithm that resets the frame buttons using the buttons function, which determines how many buttons the game should have next, what they should say, and what function each button should call based on the current state of the game. Both of these algorithms, Schrodinger and Buttons Frame are noteworthy algorithm, algorithms that are integrated in the main algorithm in order to make fighting these possible in the adventure game. Okay, so that makes sense. I'm looking here at the title of that function, and if I go up here, that was the second one under the main one. And this algorithm is very beefy. So now 2D, here's the prompt. Capture and paste the program code segment that contains an abstraction you developed. So we're going from algorithm to abstraction now. So this is going to be marked with a rectangle. Now your abstraction should integrate mathematical and logical concepts and explain how your abstraction helped manage the complexity of your program maxing you out at 200 words. So here's the sample response to 2D. This must be the copy and pasted code for the abstractions and wow there's quite a bit and I see there's algorithms inside of the abstraction that's okay so let's read what the student wrote first and then we'll go back up and look at it we're almost done here so this code implements a large amount of abstraction because it condenses code pieces that are essential to the program into single functions and then calls those with the function buttons oh my gosh like that first sentence can probably be used for every single program in the world this code implements a large amount of abstraction that's just going to be true for a lot of code the second sentence all of the buttons in this program are set by functions called a new one button new two button or no button that contain all of the code required to start a new frame with that number of buttons for each of these functions it takes 69 lines of code to reset the frame set its initial conditions properly and add the new buttons with the required text this code manages complexity well because it makes it easier to edit the code used to create the buttons because it does not need to be edited for every single condition of the buttons function. The buttons function is also an abstraction because it condenses all of the logic necessary to determine the current state of the game into one function that can be called to check all possible cases at any point in the game where it is necessary. In addition to containing instances of abstractions, again this significantly condenses the program code and made it easier to create a large function because all the code to run it only needed to be edited in one place. So man, it is rough reading a paragraphs about code, but it's important to explain your thinking through any process in life. So if nothing else, this is just good practice for that. And then the part, the third part, remember part one was a video, part two is writing responses, and part three here is just you pasting your code. So that should be the very easiest part. And in that code, you will have an oval and rectangle. So I didn't paste all the program code because that student was using Python, and I didn't want you guys to really stare at that too much. But I do have this um, larger section of code up here that I wanted to show you how to put the oval for the algorithm and the rectangle for the abstract. So I saw the word if, so I put an oval there. Let's go over here. There's another word if. So if I go to insert, I can click shapes. Here's an oval. And then I just bring it uh, as much as I can across the code that is showing an algorithm. I'm going to right click. This allows me to change the fill to... I should have a, a nothing. Here we go. No fill option. And then I don't like a blue circle. Let me make that red. There we go. And there's an oval. And now let me go up here to one of the functions, aka the abstraction they created. If I just go here, defining a new button, okay, every time new button is called, um, this code right here is taking care of that complexity. So go back to insert shapes. Here's a rectangle, and I'll do the same exact process. And it looks like I need to go down here a little until that second function starts right there. And they're not letting me because of the page break. So if I was you, I just pressed Control Z to undo. If I was you, and I'm going to make this a PDF, let me just take these lines and 
move them to in to its own page. There we go. So try this again. Insert shapes rectangle all the way across this one function. Right click, no fill, red outline, and there you go. I should be good because right here, let's pretend this was the abstraction I talked about. Down here, let's pretend um, this first oval right here is the algorithm I had talked about. Oh, and then maybe here's the child algorithm. So with all that said, this should not be too hard of a task. We've been practicing a lot of this throughout the year. And of course, we'll do a practice submitting to the College Board, so submitting as a draft, and we'll do that in class. But for now, just make sure if you are in my class, you've circled all these, these words in red that I went through um, during the video.